This empty chair represents the addict who died today, not knowing recovery was possible. Hi there, and welcome to another edition of The Empty Chair, Exposing Addiction. Uh, before we get into our show, I'd like to again remind you that uh, all of our past episodes, which is probably close to 40 now, can all be seen on YouTube by searching The Empty Chair Show. I think you'll find that there'll be something for everyone there, and uh, it'll give you a chance to get caught up and be able to see what we've been doing over the last few years. Uh, speaking of uh, previous shows, it was probably a little over a year ago that we did a one-hour special with the uh, Chief of Police from Gloucester, uh, Chief Campanello, and our own Chief uh, Joe Solomon from Methuen. And if you remember, the Chief from Gloucester spoke about a program that he had pretty much just started called the Angel Program. And of course, uh, those of us from Methuen and all the surrounding communities, uh, we thank him for opening up the door because, uh, because of his program, so many others have uh, also been initiated. And again, our own Chief Solomon, who actually at that time there had made mention that he was also in the process of uh, uh, doing something not only similar, but I think he's pretty much expanded <laughs> on it. And, uh, and that's what we're going to get into uh, tonight. Uh, this program was initiated just around a year ago now and it's been expanded and uh, and my daughter will introduce the uh, two young ladies who have uh, uh, making this program go. Thanks. Um, yeah, so my name is Colleen. I'm an addict. I love doing this show. Um, I think it's really important. I have to say this like every time, um, you know, raising awareness, prevention, uh, and a lot of good positive things that happen. We've had addicts on here. We've had all kinds of guests on here, but I think it's um, especially important now. I know the world of addiction just seems like this horrible, like grim place that nobody seems to care about and, and nothing is being done about it and people want to ignore it and the stigma wants to just stay there. But like we do this show to show people that there are people that, um, that care, that help, that there are good things happening. Um, so tonight, I guess we have uh, Jennifer Burns and Jackie Ingersoll, um, Community Engagement Specialist for Methuen Police Department. So would you mind telling us, I don't know who wants to start, what exactly you guys do. I have a coin if you want to flip it. <laughs> <laughs> She's going first. Um, the name of our initiative is CARES, Community Addiction Resource Engagement Services. And what Jennifer and I do, we provide recovery resources, um, which includes um, we help people with treatment, um, family, not interventions, but meetings to help with, you know, um, ways to pursue people into treatment and tell them about recovery. Um, not just detox, IOP, maintenance, anything like that. And we do a, an awful lot of family, family involvement, trying to, you know, they want to talk about what they can do with their child or loved one who is addicted. Mm. Genuine elaborate. What do you know in your head? I, she's looking at you. I think that means okay. It's up to you now. Jen. Oh, okay, excellent. Um, yes. So one of that Jackie spoke about one of our. Um, so the, the initiative we began in October officially of 2014, um, and essentially, you know, we do want to thank the the chief of um, Gloucester because he did open the door and in, in you know in meeting with the chief and our supervisor Saj. Essentially, we wanted to make it more comprehensive. We didn't want it to just be individuals um, seeking treatment because we can get individuals into detox, but then what happens after that? So ultimately, um, you know, we do outreach to high-risk populations. So when an overdose occurs, um, we follow up with them at the hospital or within 24 hours if there's a phone number or an address. Um, if there's not an address, <coughs> excuse me, and it's happening like in a local parking lot or something, we have reached out and talked to um, managers at different restaurants where you know this activity is happening mm -hmm. in the community. Um, another component of our initiative is also to educate um, and raise awareness and reduce stigma in the community. 
Um, we've done a few different presentations in the community. We did our first one was at Nevin's Library, where um, you know we raised awareness there and educated the um, employees there. It was during their professional development that when we talked about mental health and addiction and some of the signs and symptoms and you know what to do if what they can do if a patron you know is in an, you know having an overdose or something. Um, we just most recently did an educational workshop with, with yourself um, and um, represent, oh. representative Senator, no, representative no. Linda representative Candle. Candle. Oh, at the Senior Center. At the Senior Center. Yeah, that Center. was a lot of fun. Yeah, that, that, and that, we had a great turnout for that. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. a lot of good feedback, a lot of great questions, so you know that the, everybody was engaged. Mm -hmm. um, and they also wanted to know what more they could do for the community. And, and I think that's the important piece of our initiative is to involve the whole community. It's not just the individual. Um, because the individual that's caught up in, in addiction, it affects their families and the community. So we're taking it to the larger, more comprehensive yep. than just you know getting somebody into treatment. What was the response like when you when you did the thing at the Nevins Library? Or you said if there's like an overdose in the parking lot, so you talked to like the business owners there about what you do. Like how was the response from that? Were they kind of like didn't want to hear it, or were they pretty open to it? I would hope they would be. They open were to it. open to it. They were absolutely. We only had one pushback from one of the local business owners. Well, actually, it was a man manager, it wasn't even a business owner, of one of the local um, restaurants um, where they were they were not interested yeah. um, in it. However, our, we've had really good um, building that community piece with, with whoever we've reached out to as far as the community goes. Well, and, and just recently, just this month actually, I know both of you were hired uh, part-time, and I know you were putting more hours in than was required. <laughs> Because, uh, you know, as we've spoken many a times, when you get a phone call, uh, you can't look at your watch because somebody needs your help. But as of uh, the new fiscal year, you guys, because of, for better or for worse, because of the, uh, the increase in your uh, activity, you've both gone full time now. Yeah. Yes. And because we're great workers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, I, I, I do know, I know Colleen has uh, referred people to you. I know mm -hmm. my uh, support group, Circle of Hope, and MVP ASAP, who you guys have been very supportive along with the police, obviously. I know it, it's made my job in both those positions a lot easier when I have someone to refer the people to. Mm. And uh, it really is. I mean, uh, uh, so uh, just, I'll tell you what, why don't, why don't we run through a, a hypothetical. Uh, first we'll start with an addict who's looking for help, and then we'll check with the crazy parent who wants the addict to get help that really doesn't want help. <laughs> we'll start with the easy one first. All right, so let's say, and, and by the way, right now, this position is still pretty much the best kept secret in Methuen and the Merrimack Valley, but... Uh, but it is getting more known, and uh, like I said, we don't get all the uh, the fanfare of the Gloucester program, but they will explain, and they already have explained, that they the services they provide really are truly above and beyond what the ANGEL program uh, does offer. So, all right, let's say uh, somebody supposedly has hit their bottom, uh, they, they need help, uh, They've heard of the program, and they give one of you girls a call. So, what's the process? Go ahead. Do you want me? Sure. Now, this is if someone who suffers from addiction calls us. Yeah. Well, so she's giving you the easy one, <laughs> so we're going to give her the hard one next. Um, so, they're willing for help. Yeah, they're willing calling to... you up and they say, Jackie, you know, I've had it, but okay. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. Can you help me? So, the first thing we would do is do a intake with them, whether it be on the phone or if it's they're at the station or mm -hmm. if we re respond to the hospital or something like that. Um, and our intake consists of, you know, their basic information, um, you know, their stats and stuff and insurance information because that's obviously a big deal when it comes to treatments. That's the biggest deal, barrier. And we would, if we would find out what kind of treatment they're looking for, if they'd like further treatment along the way after the detox, if they don't want to, a lot of barriers are they don't want because they have to work, they don't want to go to an inpatient mm -hmm. detox. So it could be IOP. It depends on each person what they want. Right. But we would start the calls where we, what beds are available, what insurances cover where, and 
just keep calling until they gave us one because they don't want to listen to us anymore, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm going to take a, a guess because I, I know it's hard to get a bed, but I know it's, with you guys anyway, it's a lot easier to get a deep talks bed than it is, like we were talking, uh, an aftercare. It have to be a 28-day or six-month. So what kind of luck have you guys had when it comes to finding in-house treatment after detox? We've had a few successes. Yeah. Individuals that we've gotten into detox, um, wanting further treatment, we've been able to, and that's part of our, our job too, is building those relationships with the yeah. treatment facilities. Um, and we've been able to place them into the further um, next level of care, which would be the recovery home. Um, it beyond the CSS. So it's not the CSS or TSS that we're, they're going into. They're going into a recovery home, which is a four to six month right. placement. And we've had a few people that have successfully gone through that. Um, however, not all individuals going into detox want that either. Right. So. Yeah, so, I mean, if somebody really wants to, I mean, it, I don't know, just from like my own experience, like, you know, to get into detox and then even to get into like a halfway house, sometimes you have to go to the holding in between. And if you're, if you really want to go, then, you know what I mean? Like you'll, you'll wait, like you'll go, you know, like wherever, mm -hmm. wherever you have to. So I think it's definitely trying to, uh, if the person has like the willingness to be able to stay, like no matter what, because I know that's like, you know, really desperate on that first call. Like I need to get into detox, but then, you know, once everything's out of the system and you start to feel better and it's like, okay, well, what about further treatment? Well, I feel, I think I'm good. <laughs> you know, I, I have a job. Yeah, I got a job. Like, I'm going to go home in a relationship. It's fine. And, it, and if that's the case, we definitely help set up the services within the community. Mm -hmm. Like Jackie had spoken about the IOP. Um, you know, we refer to individuals to 12-step. There's also recovery yoga that happens in Salem, New Hampshire on Thursday evenings. So there's many pathways to recovery, too. Um, you know, there's different models out there, so we'd make sure that we try and give them the options of, you know, what is available in the community they're going back to, because that is extremely important. You know, you can take the person, and I've said this many times, is you take the person out of the environment, you know, and you get them cleaned up. If you're sending them back to the environment, you need those other thing, you know, other services or resources in place um, so that they can hopefully sustain in recovery. So if they're willing to stick to it, there's like there's a whole bunch of options for them. It doesn't just have to be like, I mean, like you said, like it's IOP not cookie cutter. Yeah, yeah. It's so not if you really want to do it, like you'll find, Absolutely. you know, they'll find and a way to do it that works. We follow yeah. them as well too. You know, even the first participant we had, we're still in contact with now. Mm -hmm. You know, we check up on them or if they need something else, mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. it's we've just also, to check in. And we've also had individuals call us we've gotten one particular individual into detox a few different times and Jackie and I actually had a conversation okay what can we do differently with this individual mm -hmm. upon release of detox because yeah. you know that happens we understand that addiction is a chronic relapsing brain disease um, but also too you know what where are we lacking services for this individual that they're calling us every couple yeah. of months mm -hmm. so it's not so much yeah you know, and, and I mean the good thing about that particular individual is at least they keep trying. Thank God they're But alive. I can understand, right. you know, you know, you keep trying the same thing over and over again. It doesn't work. You do want to look into a different course of action. Mm -hmm. So I mean, and 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 again, the the program that you guys are on, I think that's what makes it so special because not only do you follow up on the individual cases, but you are so familiar with so many various types of treatment. You know, I mean, there's a lot of medical treatments from methadone to Vivitrol, and you know, there is the IOP, which, you know, if somebody's taking it serious, an IOP can be just as good as a, you know, in-house treatment with all the exactly. mm -hmm. meetings and uh, stuff that they get on there. Okay, now. <laughs> now, now you have one of those lunatic parents that, uh, that I probably gave them your number. That's usually the way. <laughs> That's exactly how and, it happens. <laughs> and, you know, and, you know, they call you, and when I usually give them uh, your number, I basically tell them that you can give them general information, but as far as getting their child or whatever in treatment, the, their, their kid has to call. Mm -hmm. So you do get one of these parents who want recovery a little bit more than their kid. Uh, how do you handle those lovely individuals? 
<laughs> well, you gave Very her the carefully. First one, so <laughs> Which example should we use for this week? I don't know. I mean, ultimately, to it, I mean, I do bring it back to the individual. Like, what are you doing to take care of yourself? Because ultimately, you know, it it is a fam. You know, when a person's addicted, it does. An inactive addiction, it does affect family members, loved oh, ones, you know, so. and it, it keeps going out. So ultimately, what we've seen, unfortunately, more often than not, and I say this, you know, without judgment, is sometimes the parents become sicker than the person in active addiction mm -hmm. because that becomes their addiction. Um, you know, and of course, they want to do what's best for their child. Um, you know, we all do what, what we feel is best. You know, everybody does the best they can, I believe, in life, um, you know, with the information that they have. And we, we handle them with, you know, with kid gloves sometimes because, you know, they're, we, uh, we take it from, they're just as sick as the individual. I mean, we give them the resources they need, whether it be, you know, sectioning. Are you at the point where you're ready to, you know, and I hate to use this word, but are you at the point where you're ready to give your child an ultimatum? Like, mm -hmm. no, you can't continue to come in this house anymore. You need to go get treatment. No, I'm not going to give you any more money. So we kind of see where, you know, gauge where the parent is at. Um, as they're not many of, I don't believe any of them have been in denial, the parents that we've worked mm -hmm. with. I mean, we have worked with individuals um, that don't believe that they have a problem, you know, with, with drugs or alcohol. Right. But the parents are pretty much not in denial. Mm -hmm. um, but just to gauge where they're at and how can we best serve them, right. but also what are you doing to take care of yourself? Yeah. And, and, you know, in speaking on the side of a parent um, before, before my wife Francine, wise me up. Uh, I was always, I always felt that I had to have her around me because she wouldn't die. Mm. And you know it and I know it now and, and one of the things I preach to my groups is that a majority of the ones who die from overdose usually happen at the house mm -hmm. anyway. Right. But I mean, I, I do know you know, and, and you're right, you know, it's not so, yeah, parents really aren't in denial, but they're afraid, and they really believe that they can watch their kid 24-7. Mm -hmm. It's just a very helpless, helpless it feeling. Is. I mean, really, I, I, really, obviously really. I didn't deal with it with a child, but, you know, having people in my life that I was really close to and just, like, mm -hmm. watching them go down this downward spiral and just destroy themselves and like and you want to and same thing you said like if, if i'll just keep them you know like right here like i'll just mm. be with them all the time and, mm. and exactly what you said like i you know you just become like sicker than the person mm -hmm. you know and it's um yeah it's an awful like very it powerless is. feeling well, I, yeah and i know what we do is we try to keep the people involved in our group hopefully they'll get stronger as they go along but it's always nice that when we refer them to a couple like you, and they kind of hear pretty much the same mm -hmm. thing, then they know it's not just, mm -hmm. you know. So obviously we do appreciate the, uh, the impact, you, because you're right, uh, I, I think the family member, especially when the addict is active, I mean, that's when the family members are yeah. really. And you did touch on a point too, we always make, we do ask them too if they have Narcan and if they don't we, we advise oh, them how to get that. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, yeah. we're actually going to get trained um, the 19th mm -hmm. of next month to be able to hopefully be able to add that to our services to the Good. community. Good, yeah that's an awesome thing. Mm -hmm. Well I'm sure you've already saved like a lot of uh, lives since you guys have been have been doing this. I mean I, I reached out to you um, for help and uh, I don't know. It was just like it was almost like overwhelming. Just to, you know, look. it's like I call this one and then call that, and I think you were at like a, a game or something. Like, My well, son's on the graduation. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, oh no no, that's okay. You're like, no no no, let me just. And it was like they were just on, like on, like working like as a team, and it did not take long at all to get you know, um, you know, one of my sponsees into into treatment and she did go on to you know she went on to further you treatment said she's still doing good yeah 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 she's still doing good she's at a program in lowell that's awesome. and uh you know i when i saw her after i mean the last time i saw her was dropping her off at the detox and she did not look very good yeah. <laughs> obviously like she looked just broken and you know but we were just so grateful and it's funny because we had we were in the police station parking lot and um we were waiting for the call from from one of you and we ended up just kind of saying a prayer and within like 45 seconds, like the phone rang and it was you and, the, you know, get her there at this time. And she was gone and she was, you know, off and she's in the, you know, and then I saw her, you know, a while later um, at the at the meeting and I almost didn't recognize her. She just looked so good. I was like, 
I was like, wow, you know, I almost wish you could have like seen, but you, I mean, you know, you've, you know, like you've seen, but just mm -hmm. like the difference yeah. that like, you know, just your efforts make, I know it's hard to like, you know, see it right in front of you sometimes, but mm. um, that was a pretty drastic, you know, a pretty drastic change. Yeah. Now tell me something. Now, obviously you guys have been uh, promoted to full time. What kind of, res well, I'm sure the response from the, you know, Chief Solomon and Kevin Mahoney and Jim Gunther is all very positive. What kind of response have you really gotten from other city officials or have you, be it the mayor, city councils, or whatever like that? Have I think going approving full time is good, is recognition <laughs> enough. <laughs> Have, you know, I mean, do you know if they've ever made any, I mean, I know I've talked to a couple of city councilors and obviously uh, uh, they were, and this was a tough budget year, but mm. uh, cutting your program wasn't even an a afterthought. So, I mean, obviously they've been very happy. And I do know that you are tracking all the cases you do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, what are you finding I mean, I know it's only been a short term, but what are you finding when you're tracking them? I mean, I mean, uh, how do you think the program's working on, 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 as a whole? It depends how you're measuring success. Yeah. I mean, ultimately... And I, and I don't do the percentage. Right. But I mean, I'm talking about the program itself. Uh, how do you feel, you know, you're tracking them? How do you think... Uh, so ultimately, I mean, the three areas where um, it needs the most attention is responding to the overdoses, mm. um, the, uh, talk, you know, talking to family members, helping them with resources, and getting individuals into treatment. Right. So those are the three areas. Um, we've done you know, quite a few presentations and educational pe pieces in the community, um, but those are the three areas where we're seeing we're doing the most work. Yeah, and, you know, and, and I agree, you know, everybody should be able to get treatment. Mm -hmm. But... Oh. What I'm also so happy about is the prevention, the education, and the awareness work you do, you know, which coincides with MVP ASAP. Obviously, that's our main goal, too. Because mm -hmm. the truth of the matter is, if we don't stop people from becoming addicts, then this is never going to end. Right. I mean, uh, the well, best cure is not to get sick. Mm. Right, exactly. And just to um, elaborate a little bit more, providing re um, treatment options, it's, it also includes the community plans because there are, like, there is Clean Slate, you know, which helps individuals that can detox in the community sure. to ultimately get on Vivitrol or something, mm -hmm. um, you know, and there are other modes of detox in the community using medication-assisted therapies um, that individuals have opted for, too, so it's not just getting into a treatment facility. Okay, now, and now uh, I think you guys have had a great first year. You know, and that was at part timers. So, what do you, what do you envision yourself, you know, in the coming years? Do you, do you see your department even growing, or I mean, what what are some of the goals, and what are some of your expectations for the future? Mm. I think it's just like recovery, one day at a time. We take it as it comes. <laughs> you know, every day it's something new. Like it, this is from the ground up. Every day we say, well, we're going to do this. We're going to, you know, it's yeah. a work in progress, without a doubt. Mm. So ultimately, we're planning a couple of events in September, mm -hmm. the same weekend that your event is okay, going to yeah. happen. We're yeah. in between, so we're going to we're planning an overdose vigil on the Friday before your event, and then mm -hmm. we're planning a recovery walk the Sunday after your event. Nice. So ultimately, um, you know, that's we want to build the recovery capacity and also honor those that you know families have lost. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing that we're working on, you know, and we're hoping to be able to have that because September is National Recovery Month. Exactly. Um, where individual, you know, a lot of people in recovery do different activities across the state and nation to, you know, to break the stigma mm -hmm. of addiction. Um, you know, also we, you know, Jackie and I were both talking and we've been trained in being able to, how can we keep the individuals engaged, you know, longer than, you know, the three months that we've been doing. Yeah. So we, you know, we're thinking about, you know, and, and whether this is approved or not, because we have that chain of command, is to maybe have some type of group, maybe, you know, almost like, and I hate to call it this, an alumni mm -hmm. group of <laughs> participants involved, um, you know, where they can come so that they have that uh, extra piece um, 
connected to us, you know, and maybe a relapse prevention or how to deal with triggers or, you know, a recovery related groups mm -hmm. where they don't need insurance to pay for it because ultimately it would be part of our job description. Right. It would be free to them. Um, and it would just, it would be something, you know, once they've been involved, maybe, you know, three, after three months or something, because we are following them for a period of time. I mean, I'm sure they don't want us to follow them forever. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so, so some of those things we're thinking about, um, but also well, I, I to this other. I think that's a wonderful idea. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and not only will it help you with your tracking, but obviously, yeah, it, it's expanding your whole program. Mm -hmm. uh, I know this is going to be hard to believe, but we are a little bit short on time right now. So what I, I love like, that line. Yeah, I, I <laughs> That's my like, favorite part. <laughs> you know, I would like each of you, you know, maybe just to take a minute, talk to the audience, tell them how they can get in touch with you, how easily accessible you are, and you know, make your pitch so that I want you people to get a lot more phone calls. Okay. So, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so my name is Jennifer Burns. We. My, uh, we can be reached through the, um, if you call the Methuen Police Department, my extension is 8611. Um, my cell phone number is 978-701-7782, um, which is on, we are, you know, we are on call at all times. Our phone is on. Um, so that's pretty much it. <laughs> Jackie? Um, my phone number is 978-701-8195, and my extension is 8610. 8610. You well, want to wrap up, Carl? Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I'm I'm still just like blown away just by everything that's happened. You know, I know with like you and and you and and Desaglio and and the chief of police, just like everything that's um, I know that has like spiraled into like this awesome <coughs> thing with just like help and, and breaking the stigma and the awareness and like I I mean I got clean like a long time ago. Like thank God it feels good to say that, but <laughs> it was it was just like all right, get the list, start calling places. I need a ride. I need cigarettes. Try, there was nothing like the help that is available now. So like, hopefully if anybody's watching and mm. they, they can see what is, I mean, you just, uh, there is no time of day that you can't like call like to get help. Mm. You know what I mean? So the help is there. So if you know somebody that needs help, like please call them and start the process. Uh, Cause it's definitely worth it. Take okay. advantage of the help. You just stole my thunder. I was going to say exactly the same thing. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> what she said, no, in all honesty, if you, you know, whether you're a family member, whether you think you have a problem, whether you think you know someone that has a problem, yeah, give these girls a, a call. And if nothing else, they'll give you some general information. So again, I thank you guys. Thank you're doing you. a great job. And I just see bigger and better things coming down mm -hmm. the future. Um, on behalf of myself and Colleen, uh, we'll see you next month. We have a one hour special with a group called The Improbable Plays. You're going to love it. We'll see you next month on the empty chair. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.